show me something time for week five. Peter, you're up. This is too easy, Mike. It's the easiest show me something <clears throat> in the history of show me somethings. Show me something, Dak Prescott. This is very simple. You've put up 12 and 17 points in your last two games against the NFC behemoth 49ers. One at home, one on the road. You go on the road, you go to Levi Stadium. Uh, this is a team that, if anything, on defense is better than it was a year ago. And so now, all I want you to do, Dak, on Sunday, just play for this. Play for Peter King saying, show me something, Dak Prescott. Show me something, Mike Tomlin, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a strange dynamic that plays out among Steelers fans. Anytime the Steelers hit any stretch of adversity, there's a group of the fans that want to fire Mike Tomlin. Never mind the fact that he would immediately land somewhere else as a head coach, maybe that same day. They develop this desire to move on. And after what happened on Sunday in Houston – where they were out physical by the Texans, as admitted by Tomlin himself. This is the ultimate test for him to push buttons and pull strings and make his guys ready to go out and face the Ravens and beat them going into the bye. There is a huge difference between three and two and two and three for this Steelers team. They need this win, as slim as it might end up being, to go into the bye week feeling like they have some hope on the other side. Physical, old-school Steelers football, starting with Mike Tomlin and trickling down. They didn't do it last week. They need to do it this week. Show me something, Mike Tomlin. Show me something, Evan Neal. Everybody said, well, wait a second. Uh, refresh my memory, Evan Neal. Yes, the seventh pick in the 2022 NFL Draft the starting right tackle, and currently a poor right tackle for the New York Giants. And I say, show me something, Evan Neal, because the other day he called out the fans. Why should I listen to them? They ought to be flipping burgers and hot dogs. Uh, they don't really know my job. So he gets excoriated by everyone in greater New York, called on the carpet by the head coach, Brian Dable, this week. But I say, show me something, Evan Neal, and that's almost kind of, uh, you know, show me something New York Giants offensive line. Evan Neal is just a big example of it because while Andrew Thomas is recovering from a bad hamstring, you have a bad and beat up offensive line. And that is a bad, uh, you know, a bad, uh, you know, a bad portion of your team when you're going to face a team that you've got to score a lot of points again. So show me something, Evan Neal, block somebody this week, allow Daniel Jones to be remotely competitive. So the New York giants don't get embarrassed again. Show me something Kirk Daniel cousins. And the middle name is intriguing because it's not Daniel in the lion's den this week. The Lion is coming to town. Mahomes, for the first time ever, facing Kirk Cousins. They have never crossed paths before. In 2019, when they were supposed to at Arrowhead Stadium, Mahomes was injured. Matt Moore beat Kirk Cousins that day. This is Cousins' ultimate opportunity to prove that he belongs somewhere remotely on the fringes of the conversation of top quarterbacks in the NFL. This is it. This is the moment. It's never going to come in a Super Bowl. This is the day. And when you choose to go to a baseball game on Tuesday, the week that the Lion is showing up in your house, that's the ultimate litmus test for whether or not this I take every Tuesday off works because this is the test. Show me what you did Wednesday. Show me what you did Thursday. Show me what you did Friday and Saturday come Sunday when Patrick Mahomes brings the Chiefs to town because, Peter, there is a huge difference for the Vikings between 1-4 and four and 2-3, and three, and no one expects Cousins to do it. This is his chance. Round three, Peter, you're up. 
Show me something Desmond Ritter. You know, when I left Falcons camp in the summer, I was convinced that this team had the best all together, the best crew of skilled players, the deepest crew of skilled players in football. And they were adding B. John Robinson. This team was going to be tough to stop. All Desmond Ritter had to be is a C or C minus quarterback. Well, he's been a D minus quarterback. He's put up 13 points in the last two weeks. His play has directly led to losses against Detroit and Jacksonville. So now you say, what is up? Well, all week, all I've been reading in the press in Atlanta is we support Des. It's not his fault. It's this, it's that, it's the other thing. All I know is that Arthur Smith knows that he probably went too long last year with Marcus Mariota. He will not make the same mistake this year in a winnable division. I believe that this game is crucial. This game against the Houston Texans is crucial for the near future of Desmond Ritter. So show me something, Desmond Ritter. Continuing the quarterback middle name trend, show me something, Michael McCorkle Jones. The quarterback of the New England Patriots has been embattled all week because he looked horrible against the Dallas Cowboys. And they've programmed the Stepford Patriot this week to utter phrases like play one play at a time and I need to know the intention of the play and this, that, or the other thing. It feels like Mac Jones has reached whatever ceiling he's going to reach. And it feels like if they don't turn this thing around quickly, there could be some big changes in New England after the season and not just a new quarterback. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.